When I was at Hull, um, it'd been well, quite a number of years ago, we had a player there called John Bostock, who was a, a child prodigy, you remember he was at Crystal Palace, I think he actually played for Palace at 15, deep religious beliefs, uh, we were playing a game, I think we were actually playing down at Crystal Palace on a, on a Saturday morning, um, so we were, we were sat around over breakfast and we were having a chat around things and he was trying to, I, would, I wouldn't want to, would I want to say brainwash, would I want to say that? however you want to say it, but basically he was trying to instill his beliefs on a, on, a, on a number of the squad. This guy was only 20, 21 at the time, he was only a young lad, John, and I disagreed with a number of the things he was saying to me, but he, he started to go along the lines of, do you remember the, the story with Glenn Hoddle years ago, when Glenn Hoddle had, had believed that people uh, with disabilities had been punished for a former life? Now, obviously, me, in my position, I had a, I had a daughter, or I have a daughter with, uh, with Down syndrome, special needs, and he was basically saying that to me, saying that people with special needs have... Um, are being punished for, and the parents are, are being punished for their for their former lives. It's like John, you got to shut your mouth now because you don't realise what you're saying. And when he realised, he was obviously all very apologetic. And this is his belief. Taking that forward, we had a um, around Christmas time. Nigel Pearson was our manager at the club, and he gave him and his preacher at the time a, f uh, a platform to preach to us around Christmas and, and what Christmas was about and the beliefs. I went and saw Nigel after, after the train because we didn't know anything about it. It was almost like sprung on the lads as well that we were given this lecture for half an hour on, on how wrong we were doing, you know, young lads doing what young lads would do, whatever it would be in your own private time. And um, it, was, it was extremely uncomfortable for everyone concerned that was in the room at that time. I went to see Nigel Pearson, one of the, I would, probably was the, the most experienced player there, and I says, you cannot ever let that happen again. He said, to be quite honest with you, I didn't know. I told him that the story that we'd had just only a week or so previous to that, that we'd had this conversation speaking to a number of the players, uh, and me in particular, who had deep reservations about his beliefs anyway, but it's his belief, keep his belief to himself, and that was it. And, but when he was given that platform from Nigel, and I don't think, as I said, Nigel didn't really know what he was going to be saying and how he was going to be addressing us, but he was given that, that, that platform to address the team, and it was, it was, it, it was very much, we were trying to be taken into the flock. I don't, I don't even know the religion now, but it's certainly down in London. There's, there's articles on John Bostock and his beliefs and uh -huh. things like this have been written on him over the years, and uh, this is a sort of thing again that that can start to overstep the mark um, going forward. But that that was how it was at Hull, what, what, 2011, whatever it would be as well. So it was uh, it was very uncomfortable, very disconcerting as well at the time when he was uh, when he was chatting to us and preaching to us. Yeah. So Pearson said, "What? Uh, sorry, geez, actually, I didn't realise. Shouldn't have. Shouldn't have let that happen." Yeah, he did. Yeah, that was that was the conversation that we'd had. Nigel and me had the conversation like that. But I think once he once it had started. Um, Nigel was, was, he was, he was basically, he, he'd said to Nigel, look, I want to speak to the lads, I've got my preacher in with me. I think he was thinking it was going to be more of a, just a, a, a light religious chat around the, the, um, the, the real Christmas, you know, the, the Christmas nativity and all this sort of thing. Uh, but once it had started, it, it started to become very, very uncomfortable, the, 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 the speech and the, and the, the spiel that was coming our way, that's what we all felt. And it was, and a lot of it went in one ear out the other with, with one or two others, but I was quite annoyed from the original conversation yeah. that I'd had with him, that he'd been given this this uh, this platform to chat to us, yeah. And was he airing those views as well? The, the not like really, no, not really that strong, because we'd already had that I'd already had the conversation right, okay. with John that he needed to shut his mouth in no uncertain terms uh, about these beliefs. It's his own belief, keep them to himself and don't say anything. How did he react when he said that to him? Um, John? Yeah. Ah, he was very defensive, very defensive. Um, t he'd, he'd, he'd gone wha right on the back foot when I that, had that conversation with him. But it didn't, it didn't take away from his own beliefs that, that he'd mm. had. And, and then it was not long after, he, he, he went abroad, I think he went to Belgium, he went to a few clubs around Europe. Tremendously talented young player. Um, but I felt that the talent, he, 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 was, he, 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 he was of the belief where he, he was, and, and <laughs> As daft as it seems now, he'd say, look, oh, I'm, as, I'm as good as Cristiano Ronaldo. I am like Cristiano Ronaldo. This is what he was saying at the time. Um, and God's will will take me to the top of the game. If it doesn't take me to the top of the game, then, then so be it. And I felt because of the talent that he got, it was affecting his own mindset and how he was actually playing the game. That's the way that I felt. Again, you know, however, you, you know, whether you, everyone's beliefs are, the, are their beliefs. That's what I felt. It, it started to take over John's life in a way that was affecting his career around it. And I said to you, he's... He's gone and had a career in the game, probably John's 
I would say now 24, 25, maybe even a bit on that, 27, 28 now probably. And he's having a career within the game, which is great in itself, which is difficult, as, as we all know, to, to get any sort of career in the game. But I think the, his potential w was never reached because of maybe his, um, I feel, with his, yeah. with his belief going forward, yeah.